Hey guys and welcome to this brand new video. Today I'll talk about Fortinet and I'll explain to you why I think Fortinet is the best company to invest in the cybersecurity market right now. And the reason why I do that video is I made a video roughly a year ago and after this CrowdStrike crashed almost 20% yesterday on November 30th, I thought, well, let's make an update video about Fortinet, they have a new investor presentation in November 2020, and let's start 20 years of growth. Fortinet has been profitable and free cash flow positive every year since IPO in 2009. So that's a very important thing. And also one of the major difference between the other cybersecurity companies, they are not necessarily profitable. But let's take a look at a few of these headlines. So first of all, it's among the top five performing Stocks in the S&P 500 in 2021. That's true. That's very, I'm very happy that I was invested in it. We saw 5.6 billion in billings and a revenue of 4.4 billion, billion. Expected revenue of 4.4 billion. Although I have to admit, I don't quite understand where's the difference between billings and revenue. So if any one of you knows that, it would be very, very nice if you could comment that. That would be very nice. We got a 25% operating margin. I love that. What I love quite a lot is the um, 1.2 billion in free cash flow and a 36% free cash flow margin. By the way, 36% free cash flow margin, it is a lot. Yet, for example, if you compare that, for example, to Visa or MasterCard, that is not that much, but that also has to do with the fact that I'm very, very much impressed on how high the free cash flow margin on Visa and MasterCards are. But still, it's amazing free cash flow margin. And over 1,285 issued global patents. What we'll see is that R&D is quite a very important topic for them because Fortinet is, as I've mentioned earlier, a cybersecurity company. And as a cybersecurity company, it is very, very intelligent if you continuously invest in R&D to make sure that your product is always on the edge of the best possible product because well the bad guys in the world won't stop being bad just because you stop investing in R&D. Financial targets 10 billion in billings and 8 billion in revenue and operating margin of 25%. Also we want an adjusted free cash flow margin in mid to high 30% range. Well, the higher the better, I would say. Fortinet, a leader in the cybersecurity industry. Cybersecurity has a total addressable market of 199 billion. Honestly, I ask, why on earth don't you just like write 200 billion? And by the way, that's based on expectation for 2026. Fortinet is one of the largest cybersecurity companies. Well, that is not saying anything. And long term, Industry drivers support our growth. Yeah, that is true, but we'll talk about that later. Fortinet security devices and data across networks. So they have hardware, software, and cloud. And they have the subscription services, as we can see here. Over 80% of engineering talent in North America. So it appears as if especially the United States and Canada are the place where Fortinet well, how should I say, has their employees or where the majority of employees are based. Well, typical US-based Silicon Valley company. We also have a place in Israel and in India. And what I find quite interesting is India and Israel as a place because one would probably expect that they chose, I don't know, somewhere in Europe or South Korea or Japan as a place for research and development because we can see that Blue Dot is research and development. But now they chose Bangalore and Herzliya. I hope I pronounced it right. And I think that is due to the fact that especially as far as I know in Bangalore, lots and lots of extremely good qualified people in the software and IT industry are located. So that definitely makes sense and I find that very, very interesting 
and I hope I really hope that India and Israel will 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 be prosperous economies in the future and that these people there can really achieve a very high lifestyle because I think the IT industry is definitely an opportunity for the for these two countries. Consistent execution rule of 40 well the only reason why I showed that slide is because I'm a bit confused how exactly did you achieve the rule of 40 if in the year 2009, 2013 and 2017 you're below the 40 line? I don't quite get that, but if one is able to explain that to me, I would be very, very happy. Because in my opinion, or in my understanding of math, for example, in that case, 33 is still less than 40. But maybe I'm just an idiot. Here is the management team. I can't really say anything about them. I, I read the biography of this guy, or not the biography, but... um. The Wikipedia side about him and an interview with Forbes and I have to admit he is a very interesting um, folk to to read about well about the other guys I simply do not know anything about them but what I like is that we can see that quite a lot of them are actually at 40 net for quite a while for example this guy or this guy but on the other side this madam does show does have some experience otherwise she, and she, obviously she's good otherwise she wouldn't be there industry growth drivers and here we come to the main reason why i think an investment in fortinet is so interesting is well as we can see the total addressable market is simply growing by quite a lot and cyber security is just such an important issue and there are data leaks all over the place and i think the more the world becomes a digitalized world, the more cybersecurity will become a very important issue. Fortinet growth drivers, and we'll take a look at these growth drivers. So, vendor consolidation, consolidation. I quite don't know what a vendor consolidation is. Courage of security and networking. I don't quite know what that what that is. Heightened awareness. Well, I do know what that is because. I understand that people become more and more aware of the fact that cybersecurity is extremely important and increased investment. Well, everybody now is investing in cybersecurity. But I just mentioned that I don't understand two things. And as most investors say, well, only invest in something that you understand. And what I want to explain with me admitting that I don't understand those two points is that in investing, you don't always have to understand the every bit about what the company, every part of the software. But what you have to understand is broader economic outlook of the market where this specific investment that you take operates. And I think most people would agree that in the foreseeable future, cybersecurity will become more and more important. Does that have to mean that Fortinet will always be the one company that is the best in that market and that you should invest in? No, it doesn't, but at least they operate in a market where the future outlook is quite good. If, for example, one, come to, one would come to me and say, for example, yeah, let's invest in a company that makes, I don't know, that recycles horse shit. I would be like, I don't really want to invest in that because I don't see a growth in the horse shit market. Because, well, cars kind of killed horses as a way of to travel. Oh, you get my point. Highly fragmented industry ready for consolidation. What we can see is there are a few players. So let's say Palo Alto Networks, Fortinet, Slunk and Gene Digital. They all have above 2.5 billion in revenue. But what we can see is there are lots of companies that do not really have such a large revenue. For example, Cloudflare, by the way, I made a video about them. It's also an amazing company, or Rapid7. So, as written here, industry ready for consolidation. I would not be surprised if a lot of these companies buy each other. And I would love to see Fortinet buying, I don't know, half of those. Because at the end of the day, the more consolidated the market is, the more profitable it is for us innovation investors on the other side the more innovation well kind of gets fucked because 
why should you invest in innovation if the, you only have two competitors? You'll still make money. <laughs> Expanding our market into enterprise slash G2000. The only thing I don't know is what G2000 is, but what I know is and what I see here is a lot of growth and that's what I want to see. Because if we go to the next slide, take a look at the financial overview, we can see that the billings significantly increased and also that it is a highly diversified business and it's something I love because then the whole world is more or less dependent on the product. Income statement, because what we can see is also the revenue increases by 27% combined annual growth rate, which is ridiculous in my opinion. It is really ridiculous because if we take a look here, we can see that products grew at 31% and services 24%. And I mean, guys, that is just super solid. And if you see such such growth numbers, and we'll later see that that company is actually profitable. And you can be sure that they don't do so much wrong. By the way, what I kind of like is product and total revenue growth versus Palo Alto Networks. I think Palo Alto Network is like their main competitor. But what we can see is that in the last 12 months product revenue, they actually increase, like they, they, they bet Palo Alto Networks. But in the total revenue, well, they still are behind them. But maybe they will become number one one day. This is, by the way, another quite beautiful page because here we can see the revenue and the free cash flow. And I mean, well, it's just three years, but still, I mean, take a look at that free cash flow growth. Here we can see that a lot of money is actually used for R&D, as I said earlier. So 1.6 billion was spent on R&D in the last five years, which is amazing. And they also bought back shares. I would prefer dividends, but if they buy back stock, I'm also all right with that. And also nowadays they could probably use a bit more for merging acquisitions. And with that said, let's take a look at more financial numbers to see why I think that company is so amazing. Because if we go to this website called Seeking Alpha, we can see that the revenue grew at an unbelievable pace over the last 12 years. Also, not only the revenue, but also the net income increased as if there is no tomorrow. I mean, from 2012 to here, it's a 10 beggar in the net income growth. I mean, that's amazing, guys. Also, the diluted trust outstanding decreased. They don't have to bring out new shares to find some crazy kind of, I don't know what kind of products. Well, they don't get me wrong. Like, the share might increase, but now it decreased compared to that number. EBITDA gone up as if there's no tomorrow. If you take a look at the balance sheet, take a look at the net debt, they actually have more cash. They have more cash than debt. I mean, I love that. Take a look, total debt, almost a billion. We are up here to 1.7. Billion total cash and short term investments. I mean, isn't that amazing? Sure, one might say that the PE ratio of 46 is quite high, but guys, if we take a look at the chart, and as you know, I always end up with the chart. That chart speaks for itself. I mean, we were at $1.70 and now we are at 54. I mean, what else do we want? That is. That's the issue. I think, sure, there were times like this one here where we had a drop of 50%. I mean, that sucks. Yes, it does. But I always think if you do proper risk management, if you do proper adjustment of stop loss orders, or if you use a monthly savings plan, you will definitely do yourself a favor. If you invest in that company for the next five or ten years but i have to say that uh, as a disclaimer so don't listen to me don't trust me i'm only talking bullshit read the things down in the info box i don't take no responsibility but i hope you get the point point. and i think 
it would not be a very stupid idea to do that. Am I invested? Yes, I own 100 shares of it. I would like to increase my position. Well, right now it's a bit too tricky for me. I, I, I don't have a lot of cash right now, unfortunately. But I sold a cash uh, covered call at 70. So if that stock is about to move to 70 until the 16th of December, I won't be invested in the company anymore. But I think as soon as I get more cash, I'll probably sell cash secure put at around 50. Or I mean, if the stock increased, like like showed me nice proper upwards trend like it did here, then I would probably, well, continue to sell those cash secure put as long as I can, as long as I have the cash, and then hope that one day I'll get assigned. And with that said, I really hope you enjoyed the video. What do you think about Fortinet? Are you invested? Have you even been aware of the company? Because the most folks that I ask, do you know Fortinet? They say they have no clue about it. And with that said, please write me in the comment what billings are. Please consider subscribing. It will really, really help me. And with that said, see you soon, guys. Bye.